welcome to the History Makers. In this episode, we are hanging out with one great personality, a man who has seen it all, a man who has been in the industry, who has tried to transform this country and make it an upright country. We are talking to none other than Dr. Ezekiel Mutua, the man of many seasons. Karibu hey, sana, Dr. CEO. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the real CEO. Sasa hiyo ni Charles Otieno. Why do they call you CEO? Charles Edgar Otieno, CEO. Okay, okay. It's an abbreviation of your name. Yes. Now this is the real CEO. <laughs> <laughs> I'm CEO twice, by the way. You are CEO twice? Yes. How? Yeah. Exactly. You know, I thought I would become, after being a CEO for six years yeah. at Kenya Film Classification Board, yes. I thought I would be PS or minister. Yeah, now I'm CEO again at Music Corporate Society of Kenya. So double CEO. Double CEO, yeah. But you see, you are CEO. Yes. Me, I'm a born CEO. You, you are born CEO. Yes. yes. And that is better because that's what nobody takes it, it away. It takes away from you me. You remain CEO. I, I salute you, man. What a program. I've been mean, watching the personalities you bring here. Yes. Your interviews, they have human interest. They are human interest stories. And that's what is lacking in journalism. So I, I, I couldn't wait to, to be interviewed. Eh? You know, when I, I look at you, I can see the way you are sharply dressed. Oh. The only color you're missing is yellow. You know, cows have represented... <laughs> 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 yellow and green. <laughs> but you represented us I'm very well. You very However, well. <laughs> you know, this politics now, if you wear yellow, yes. and especially if you're outspoken, yes. and you are you are coming for an interview or you are a public figure, yes. they say you are UDA. So you just, just to avoid, not that there's anything wrong, oh, yes. but just to be neutral, <laughs> yes. because I serve members from all yes. manner, yeah, from all political persuasions. I didn't want, so I, I turned down on the yellow for the time being because of the political environment. So um, the, the politics aside, and yes. I know you, the other day I saw you with the deputy president, William Ruto and FBI. So <laughs> is it wrong to say that? <laughs> well, you, you know, as a, as a leader, and I'm very neutral, by the way, if yes. you Google my name, mm. I am not associated with any party. Anyone, yes. Not even the ones from Mukambani. I mean, every big person from Mukambani, you mm. know, mm. they would be allied to this party or the other. Mm. I chose to be neutral because mm. I thought, besides my role as CEO of MCSK, mm. I think uh, people look up to me mm. to give direction. Yes. And I also have friends from across. And therefore, by standing out as affiliated to a particular party, mm. I thought I would end up hurting some of my friends. And because I'm not running for any political party uh, uh, position, I decided to be neutral. So I'm not affiliated to any party. Are you neutral or are you system? You know, <laughs> are you I, system? I am actually neutral. I'm, are you? I'm quite neutral. Because but you know also if, if the DP calls me, mm. is the deputy president of the country, mm. you'll find me there. It cost me a lot when I was CEO of uh, KFCB, yes. by the way. It cost me a lot, a lot of pain. When you went there? Yes, no, no, when I associated with him. Mm. Because he would uh, call me, mm. he would attend uh, functions that I was organizing, mm. sometimes representing the president. Mm. And the stories would be twisted that, you know, mm. we've turned, uh, I remember one instance where uh, the president was to be my chief guest. Yeah at an event for the Kenya National Drama and Film Festival in mm. Kebabi University. Mm. Yes, I do. And, uh, and, uh, but it happened that that time the president was traveling to Seychelles, mm. so he delegated to the deputy. Mm. That time, nobody could suspect the, the level the of differences, yes, the rift, the rift between, between the yeah. two. Mm. So here we are, we receive the deputy president as we should, mm. and he likes what we are doing. Mm. And he's there praising me, heaping praises on me, Moro Corp, you're doing it well. Mm -hmm. uh, bring all these guys to Karen. Mm -hmm. So the winners from, you know, we left Kibabi University and he says, that was on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. He says on Tuesday, bring them to my place. Mm -hmm. And I started noticing there was a problem mm -hmm. because when I informed my minister, mm -hmm. because we were under the Minister of ICT mm -hmm. and the PSs, mm -hmm. they were like uh, <laughs> not quite committed. <laughs> yes. I told them, you, the DP, the DP wants to host the winners yes. and okay. the teachers yes. and the, all the directors and the cast of yes. all the those are winning. And uh, lo and beyond, when we got to Karen, they were not there. Only <laughs> C.S. Magoa from the <laughs> Ministry of Education came and I started sending trouble. Okay. So a narrative was created that okay. we had turned the Kenya National Drama and Film Festival mm. to a Tanga Tanga thing. thing. And that we were giving the DP credit or we were giving mileage using a platform that was all along 
belonged to the president. Things that we were not aware about. When these guys, uh, Kibibi, Moesha Kibibi, there are some acrobats from, yes. uh, uh, from Kamukunchia yes. that wanted to go, that were representing Kenya mm. in the US yes. as finalists globally. Mm. And they came to my office and they wanted some six million. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the money, so I started calling ministries and so on. Mm. The DP reacted to that because I posted on Facebook mm. and called me. I took them to Karen, yes. my friend. <laughs> what happened? And he gave them a million uh, bob cash yes. and coordinated. Mm. And then we supported them from my organization. Yeah. I think uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Uh, and I can tell you, by the way, that is largely why I was, um, I was outed out of KFCB. So, because uh, I, I thought that was uh, the signs of you leaving KFCB. No, no, remember that was a year before. before that yeah. was the way before. Yeah. Uh, that was 2019. Yes. And I was, uh, I left KFCB last year. Yeah. But uh, that, those undertones started coming out. I remember one time I was called and told there's a TV called Mount Kenya TV. Mm -hmm. It has run some pornographic cartoon. Mm -hmm. And we have a procedure for you know, there was a procedure for handling such, uh, uh, you know, breach of, 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 of content yeah. uh, exhibition. Yeah. So we write to these guys and so on. We thought we were doing the right thing, the right thing yes. and following the procedure. Mm. But the minister was on my neck. You have to shut down that TV station. Yeah. So I'm like, eh, that's an overkill. <laughs> We don't shut, we don't even have the power. CA could, yes. but the KFCB cannot shut. Cannot shut yeah. yeah, but there was so much pressure. I remember it was during COVID. Mm. I, at one point, doing uh, a Zoom meeting with my managers at seven in the morning mm. because there's so much pressure. Mm. I didn't know, Kumbi, this thing belonged to uh, this lady, Girishi. Yes, and Grishi's, somehow yes, it was Grishi's. associated with the DP. DP These yes. are things that we are not aware about. Yes. As we are working as government officials, yes. thinking we are doing the right thing, yes. only to be told uh, you are the one who champions morality. Yes. This TV runs a cartoon uh, <laughs> that is pornographic, and Did you are you slow. Check the cartoon? Did you? Yes, yes, it was mon pornographic. It was wrong. It was wrong. And they admitted. I wrote to them. Yes. They apologized. They said it was a mix, a program mix-up, mm. and so on. So we were, but we, we have to give a notice. Mm. Then, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we spell out the penalties. Yes. Either we find them or we take them to court and so on. It's not something you can just wake up and switch off. It's not but I was being so told by noon, Shut. switch off that TV station. Yes. CA succumbed to that and they actually called a press conference mm. and slapped with us. Uh, they switched them off air yes. for six months. Yes. But later on, mm. realizing that when I thought I was working as a professional, someone else was pushing his political agenda and using me and maligning my name, I, I believe actually at some point uh, they will pay for it. God cannot let them here. Because, because those are the shenanigans. So when you see some people being careful, yes. it's because of what they have suffered. My chairman yes. was Bishop Jackson Koske, Father Toemi Koske. I know, Jackson. Yes. And of course he's very close to the DP. Yes. By just being close to the DP, uh, that was an issue even for the entire board. Wow. Yeah. So at some point, I, I started getting all manner of uh, negativity, you know, yes. and a place where I worked and raised it from nothing. Yes. Uh, now, somehow, there was a problem. Everything that we were doing was wrong. And then there were even threats of being arrested and so on. Yes. And, and then you realize, oh, Kumbi, these things are serious. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, we had to somehow find a way out of uh, getting out when I re when they send the police to the office. Yes. But they remember I was removed by the police. Yes, I remember. That. There is no law that gives even the president mm. the power to send police to remove somebody from the office. You can be prosecuted. Why, why do you think they had to send the police? It is just say, impunity. I mean, it's because they, are, they have the power. They are close to the president. I mean, the minister sends the police and says, go and remove him. Mm. That, I don't think it is illegal. The legal procedure is mm. You, there is a way uh, administrative actions yes. are meted out. Yeah. Uh, I've never had anywhere where he was removed. I could have been wrong. Yes. Yeah, granted, that's a different story. Yeah. There could have been things that we never did right, yeah. but I have never seen anywhere, and I've gone to school well, and I'm not a child, I'm, I'm, I'm of age. <laughs> yes. I have never seen anywhere yeah. where such kind of impunity, where a CEO can be removed with the police. I, I was wondering if I was in the office, were they expecting me to resist? Yes. Were they expecting me to fight back? So when I saw the police and photos were sent to me, I 
That was the end of it. I have never been there again. I left it. But then you realize that uh, uh, impunity gets to a point where people feel they are bigger than God and they can play God with their offices and they can destroy your life. They can malign you out of political uh, inclinations or misconceptions. And uh, so I left. I left. Not because I had done anything wrong. Uh, if there was anything wrong, there are procedures. The law is very clear on how an administrative action should be executed. So but you didn't hand no... over? No, no, no. There was no handing over. What do you hand over? <laughs> the police were saying, I was on a public, I was, I was presiding over a function yes. in Kiambu yes. with the uh, staff and management of KFCB. Yes. When yes. Uh, the secretary started sending me photos, yes. there are police and that gunpoint, yes. the locks are changed. Yes. At gunpoint, uh -huh. the memos are written yes. uh, that are sent that I'm on terminal leave, I've been sent on terminal leave. Wow. Yeah, and, 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 and it was done in a way mm. uh, also to justify mm. why, to, to, to make it look like, to pacify the public that the even issues of corruption and so on. So by the time I got home, mm. I was on TV and it was like I was reading that I'm under investigation for overpayment of salaries and allowances mm. things that salary that we were saying was overpaid yes. had been paid for three years before yes it was revised in 2018 yes this is 2021 and when i'm removed from the office yeah. as ostensibly mm. on uh, on allegations of overpayment or irregular payment of salary. Mm. They continued paying me until October when my contract ended. Oh. The same salary. You see, ideally, if there is a prima facie case yes. that there is an irregularity mm. and you are removed from the office, they stop. Immediately. My last yes. pay slip from KFCB reads the same salary that I was being accused of earning illegally. So you can see that was just to justify the, the illegal removal. removal from office. Yeah. Then uh, that way it would look, even the public would think Moto is a corrupt person. And you see, that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. To hurt me at the point of integrity yes. that I've upheld since I was a child. Yeah. I was the school head boy of Ikumeni Primary School. I was a school captain in Mwala High School. Yes. I was a school captain and CEO chairman of Tala High School where I did my A-levels. Mm. It, you don't, you're not appointed. Them, the, the, those days, it used to count. Mm. Integrity used to count for you to rise to those positions. Yes. And as a result, it helped you to uh, also maintain some level of integrity. Mm. You know, you become, you, 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 you get used to, you become consistent with values. Mm. So it's not something that I, I, I take lightly. I take values very seriously. Mm. So when somebody hurts you at the level of integrity, mm. it is as good as murder. So, so what, because why? they're doing it to completely dis, 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 cripple you mm. at what makes you who you are. Yes. People call me the moral cop mm. because I uphold integrity and it's not pretense. Mm. That's how I work everywhere I've gone. That's how I work. That's how I'm known. That's how I live. Mm. But they, they spent or they bandied those stories of uh, corruption and irregular payment. In any case, by the way, mm. if there was an overpayment of salaries, mm. it's called a surcharge. It's not a mm. criminal case. Yes. You know, a surcharge, it, you know, is a process where they calculate and they tell you, you are supposed to have been paid this. You owe us this. The, yeah, the difference is this. Please pay back. Yes. It's not a criminal case. It is In any case, I don't pay myself. I don't process the, the payroll. It was the board that approved and sent this to the minister. The minister did not approve, granted. Mm -hmm. But that's a bone of contention, whether after the minister refuses to approve, it becomes an illegality mm -hmm. uh, or whether when the board, who is my employer, when they make that decision, it is, it is binding. Yes. They made it, they wrote a letter to me and said, your salary has been raised from this to this, mm. and therefore, uh, you, it can go, you can now enjoy that. Mm. And I, I, I gave it to the HR, and I started earning that in 2018. Mm -hmm. But this one was used now, and I'm saying it because you guys of the media ran it. Mm. Mm. I remember the stories were the moral cop goes immoral, and it was, it's, that, that's how, that's how. Where a cop goes tomorrow? Yeah, it was the headline and it stayed there with my yeah, photo. Which one? It was in the, even here, your, your namesake, Charles Otieno, before he left for London, did yeah. a very, you can check it, it's still there, very dirty stories yeah. without the other side. Because nobody, and there was no time for anybody to interview me. Yeah. 
yeah. and also things you know happened so quickly yeah. so when i saw those stories i knew it was a, an attack on my integrity and i told god protect me uphold me integrity is not something you go parading or you wear like a bunch it is something in you and it's something that comes out of your faith and the consistency of behavior and they helped me that this will not bring me down but i said i will not fight yeah. uh people in authority i was born i was brought up respecting authority yes. i respect people in power and for that reason this is the only this is the first time by the way i'm yes, speaking i'm giving an interview about that matter but my removal from the office mm. was done using the police it was like uh it was like a military coup <laughs> you know because there's a procedure all of us yes. are bound by the law yes the so minister who do you think the peace you out that much the, of course, there's a big agenda. I have stood for integrity. Why? I've stood Why? for our values. I was the CEO of Kenya Film Classification Board, yes. and uh, I was vocal. And my stand is known against even some of these foreign cultures mm. that have infiltrated our country and destroying our children. Mm. And my position stands to date mm. that nations rise or fall on the basis of the moral foundation, yes. the moral values that they are built on. Mm. And I was like, as the regulator, because that time I was a regulator, uh, as the regulator of what, uh, what is shown on TV and on radio and in theaters, uh, in cinema, cinema halls and so on, it's very important that we pay attention mm. to how films capture our culture, our story, and how films shape the values of our children. Mm. And I was very firm. Mm. But there are agendas, and you, you, you know, like anybody else who wants to uh, really apply their mind to this issue, mm. that content is destroying our children. The content on, the, on our phones, mm -hmm. the content on PlayStation, the content on computer games, mm -hmm. the content on TV. Mm -hmm. And I was very firm, but there, were, there was a bigger agenda than that where foreign ideologies like LGBTQ mm -hmm. and so on were being pushed down our throat mm -hmm. and I was being seen as an impediment. And therefore, the only way you could remove me was by painting me as a hypocrite who is corrupt, who pays himself salary that he doesn't deserve, and, uh, and therefore needs to be removed from the office. Remember, mm. the argument was that I have served two terms. Yes. Three years renewable once. Yes. Uh, Charles, there are CEOs right now in Kenya serving 10 years. Even within the same ministry where I was, Chiloba, for example, my brother in uh, CA, yes, yes, yeah, is four was, years. Yeah. Four years renewable once that would be eight. Yeah. The guy in Konza is doing his ninth, I think. Okay. Yeah. The media council is doing his uh, ten-year contract. Mm. So the argument that I had done six years and that was cast in stone mm. was just to remove me. So there must be another agenda. Maybe you can ask those who removed me why. But I, 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 I looked at it and I said, what God has intended will come to pass. So are they the same guys who appointed you to MCSK? No, 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 no. Yes. MCSK is a different, uh, is a different was, entity. Was that soft they advertised. Yes. No, no, no. They advertised. I could. I mean, I, I, I was applying. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've gone to school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. And I, by the way, I've never been appointed politically. Yes. I've never gotten yes. any political appointment. Not a political appointment. No, 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 no. Uh, minister or PS, that would have been political. I was read for it or ambassador. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, 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 the jobs that require just your academic papers, your experience, I am qualified for so many of them. Of and I've lived a good life. Yes. And uh, yes, and I've, I've, I've uh, gone to school well. And I have an experience that is unmatched, by the way, particularly in the area of communication. Huh? Yeah, yes, yes. I don't think uh, my CV yes. is, uh, is many people have it in terms of experience and academic qualifications, by the way. Because I did nine years as a practicing journalist yes. in the nation, when nation was the nation then. <laughs> then <laughs> five years as Secretary General of KUJ, yes. five years as Director of Information, yes. five years as Secretary of Information. Yes. And then my Master's and PhD are in Communication Studies. Mm -hmm. So when you combine experience with uh, education, with education I think you can do something for yourself. You can do something for yourself. So I was not quite dying to be appointed. Yes. I was like, I, I've gone to school. So any job, so I saw this in the newspapers and I applied, I was interviewed, I'm told I was number one. And uh, so I'm here. So it's not a soft landing for anybody because I never went back to the government to plead for a job.
But back to KC, K, K KFCB. KFCB, you did a lot of things. Yes. Cinema Mtaani. Kabisa. Cinema Mashinani. Mashinani. Yeah, including that Kenya National Drama and Film Festival, Film Festival. which we funded for three years. You incorporated the, the Nairobi Cinema. You yes, yes. So how do you say that, what could you say was your highest achievement? My highest achievement actually was creating a national conversation yes. on moral values yes. and what films can do yes. in diluting or underterrating our culture and shaping the values of our children. Yes. Uh, when I got to KFCB, I realized this was a big agenda. And remember, I had just come from the Minister of ICT, mm. where was the Secretary of Information when C.S. Matiangi mm. was our minister. Mm. And uh, together with C.S. Matiangi, uh, we started with Professor Mbitang and Demo now, mm. uh, we pushed the digital migration. Mm. Uh, C.S. Matiangi was the one who broke the, uh, the, the stalemate because he stood his ground mm. and said we must migrate. Mm. Uh, media's, media houses were resisting and so on. You remember we went up to Supreme Court and so on. Mm. And I had time because I sat in all those task forces mm. that were working on digital migration. Mm. I understood the benefits, the dividends of digital migration. Mm. And as a scholar, I, and I gave my mind to it even more you because applied. I, yes, I applied my mind to it. Mm. And I knew while there are great benefits in mm. terms of knowledge, connectivity, in terms of doing business, ease of doing business, in terms of expanding the spectrum and opening it for more players, migrating from 3G to 4G to 5G, where we are now. Mm. I knew all those benefits, but there was the flip side of it, mm. which I was worried about. So when KFCB advertised for the job, I moved into the new challenge, mm. which was the regulation of content, mm. because I just pushed the agenda for migration, but I knew with expanded spectrum would come social media, mm. would come uh, globalization, mm and 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 the infiltration of foreign content mm. would come uh, platforms like netflix and all this mm. that are accessible to our children on android devices mm. and i knew that there was a danger mm. on our morality on our culture mm. on our on the sense of values that we uphold particularly children and so i was very vocal so i realized it's not something that you can do alone because uh, like martin luther king said you cannot legislate morality you never made but we created a conversation, a national conversation, yeah. and um, the, the, the clarion call was, mm. let these discussions about the, the effects, the negative effects of content mm. be on the dining table, in the boardrooms, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the pulpit, in the mosque. Let us all talk and let parents take care, mm. let them monitor what their children are watching, mm. and let's create champions in schools, in uh, learning institutions, in the churches and everywhere, and let people take care of our children. Let's create safe spaces for the children because bad content can destroy children, and a lot of them, and you saw that. I, we, you remember, we were looking at uh, stuff like vulgarity, bad language, mm. uh, stuff like violence, incitement to violence, and hate speech, and so on. Things that are bothering us now, I saw them in 2015, mm. and I raised my, my voice against it, mm. and I was telling the country, if parents do not pay attention mm. to these things, we are going to lose so many kids into bad content. Remember the boy in Kiambu who took a machetes and cleared almost his entire family. Mm. And he said he was influenced by a film mm. called Killing Eve mm. that he watched during the COVID. Yes. And there are so many cases like that. You remember there was this blue whale challenge yes, where kids whale, were, yes. you know, progressively cutting themselves, then you move to the next the stage, next and you are being cheered by foreigners mm on uh, social media platforms mm. whom you don't even know mm. but you are a hero when you now final the final challenge was to jump from a high building and commit right. suicide yes. and a lot of kids that have now absorbed that content that has violence mm. that has vulgar language that has um, uh, obscenity and uh, profanity mm. a lot of them now are really a burden to their parents and to the government my argument was content regulation is important even for governors. Mm. It's important even for the well-being of citizens mm. that countries become so easy to govern and to manage. Citizens become so easy to live together in harmony and national cohesion becomes a reality when people have a sense of discipline. So I was championing for films that tell our story, 
films that promote our values, films that promote forgiveness, films that promote family values. Because family is the, even in our constitution, our fa the family is the, 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 the basic unit of society. And so I was saying, let's, let's focus on that. The films are not just about sex and vulgarity. We were getting music that was bizarre, mm. you know, songs like Tanga Tanga that were promoting, if you are jilted by a girl, you mm. kill them. Yes. There was so much going on mm. and people finding now the culture of instant gratification through social media platforms. So if you have a song and it is uh, not sexualized, mm. it will not sell. So t in order for you to trend, in order for you to sell, you have to put some Six. weird, yeah, do weird stuff. And they put it on social media and a buzz is created. Mm. And that was going like wild wind, mm. you know, like bushfire. Mm. People, our children, our musicians, our filmmakers were all now turning towards vulgarity and profanity and dirty content. And everybody, even TV stations, if there's no nudity, if there's no nude woman or some, you know, some vulgarity, mm. it's not selling. And I was saying, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is not our culture. It could be okay with the foreigners. But it could be okay us. in the US, but not with us. We have our own cultures, which respect elders. Our own cultures that respect positive social values, like hard work, honesty, you know, resilience, teamwork, national cohesion. Why don't we focus our themes, our, our films on these themes? And that's why we started uh, Kenya. We, we got the Kenya National Drama and Film Festival as main sponsors and it changed even the rule book, okay. completely recalibrated the entire process, changed the rules of engagement mm -hmm. so that we only embrace what is good and we trained the trainers of trainers, the directors, mm -hmm. the facilitators, the adjudicators. And then we end a theme because we are the main sponsors mm -hmm. that said are identifying and nurturing talents through by promoting moral responsibility. So that a young kid in ECD who is talented in music yes. can understand that you don't have to be vulgar for your content to sell. Can understand that you can sing a nice song. We, we also what Jerusalem did during the COVID. Mm. It didn't have anything dirty, mm. but it, it's a sword. Nyasiski, our own musician here, mm. sings very good songs. They're not dirty, but we, we relate with them. Eric Wainaina and other musicians, and there's so many also filmmakers. So I was like, content is critical. It shapes the thinking of our children, shapes their values. And if you focus on the hardware, building roads and hospitals and schools, and you forget the software of values, you can do all those things, but people will not appreciate even the roads. They will not appreciate, and we're not there. Uh, Charles, yeah. is it not the case right now when we see our national leaders exchanging bitterness, in t in, in when we see parents killing each other, when we see the levels of crime, when we see the twisted narratives, even about beauty and the way it is being <laughs> paraded and sold to us, yeah. that everything that is beauty, beautiful is what comes from the West, yeah. that our own black beauty is not appreciated until it is twisted and sexualized in a manner that it looks like the West. So these are the things I was contending with, the power of content. And remember, this is what happened to the US, a beautiful country with the best constitution, the superpower, yes. but their morals were destroyed because they allowed freedom without responsibility. So I was standing on the gap and shouting, like, no uh, like the prophet Ezekiel in the Bible, no, a lot of people had me, I can tell you. Do you know if I run for president, I'll get a lot of votes. Trust me. There are people who associate with the claimer for moral values. Not everybody is rotten. You know, there are some few bad guys who are loud. They are few, but they are very loud. But I can tell you, majority of Kenyans, they, they, they subscribe to my ideology on, on content, on morality, on values, on family, and everybody will agree we are all products of family. Even those LGBTQ guys who keep fighting me. I and always they, ask. It's a very big movement of LGBTQ. Yeah, but I always ask them, yeah. where did you come from? You are not a product of a man and a man, Charles. You are a product of a yeah. union between a man and a woman. Yes. That's the original Concept. idea, God's yeah. idea yeah. of family. Our constitution says the family is the basic unit of society. Section chapter 11 says 
our culture is the cumulative civilization of our people. So I was not wrong in any way. But people have, who want to eat money from LGBTQ, mm. they want to malign me and paint me. You know, when you live in a country where the normal looks abnormal, yes. then you know we have a problem. <laughs> And let me tell you, you don't need to be a genius yes. to know who is right in this, in this conversation. Yes. I stand my ground. And it's not something I'm making up. I told you I was the head boy of Ikumini Primary School. Ikumini in, in Mwala. Ikumini in Mwala, Machakos uh, County, yes. in 1984, 83. Yes. I was school head boy yeah. when in Form 1. I got in and I became a prefect. Yes. And by the time I was there, Form 4, yeah. I was the head boy of that school. I mean, it's not something I'm making up. I tend to believe the values that could make a boy from Mwala yeah. in Machakos County, yeah. out of abject poverty, yeah. very uh, humble background. How was your childhood? Ah, my childhood was funny, man. You know, I, you know, I tell people and they don't believe. My father used to brew the traditional beer. He was very good at what he does, by the way. He used to brew that thing. He, he partook it, yeah. but he never found anybody who was as good in making it like him. Yes. So he did it himself. In the process, So our place became like a club. So you'd see people, all manner of things there. Yeah. But it, it was also so good at it that it attracted people from far and wide. Yeah. So I remember some teachers who came to drink. Yeah. One of them engaged me in a conversation, yeah. and he's the one who got me to school. He's got teacher Anthony. I call him teacher Anthony Monyao to date. Yeah. He's alive, yeah. thank God. Yeah. So he's the one who would to my father and say, this boy, this fellow must go to school. Yes. So he took me to his school. That's how I went to Ikumini. Yes. But because I went late, my father used to take, uh, you know, the good kids. Yes. You, you, you look after, uh, you know. Animals. Yes. Yeah, animals. Yes. The, these ones who are misbehaved and cannot be trusted yes. go to school. school yes. So I fell in the category that was good. Yes. I, somehow, I was okay. Yes. I, was, uh, I was not an angel, yes. but among his children, he was very proud of me. Yes. So I was kept in that category where I would attend to his, yeah, yeah, I would be given assignments. Yes. But Anthony said no, teach Anthony, and this is how God works. Yes. Because this guy came to partake of that thing my father used to brew. Mm -hmm. In the process, I encountered, he encountered with me, yes. and he took me like his son. And I, that's how I started my journey of education. But I went to schools that were not, that are not on Google Maps. I went to many schools. Some of them closed down. <laughs> some of them are now girls' schools. Yeah, some of them are, are girls' schools. <laughs> but they, for real, for real. Eh? Uh, some of them closed down. Yes. And uh, others, they are marketplaces, you know? Yes. They're just marketplaces. Yes. But I always say education is in, equ in uh, an equalizer, equalizer because... Yes. While I was going to all those funny schools and that some of them that closed, when I went to KU, yes. I met a girl who went to Kenya High School yes. from one to from six, yes. and she has been my wife of 25 years. How did you relate? How did you... You know when you, you get to college... Mistari, you know, you, you know when, to, Yeah, Mistari, when you are coming from that background, yes. you, are, you, you, you work harder. <laughs> You work harder. You you learn how to effort. Man, how many effort? Man, how many effort? So 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 when we met, there was no at I went to the schools that closed, and you you went to Kenya High. It was like we are here. We are here, and we could converse. You see, that's why education is an equalizer. So 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 basically, my life was. Uh, I'm a child of fate, a yes. child of God. You know, destiny. Destiny. If you wish, God. I think God planned yes. how my path would be. Yes. There is no one who could see this. Because I'm not the firstborn, I'm not the lastborn. Mm -hmm. I'm somehow in the middle. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I kind of got some divine guidance and connections and networks yeah. that have brought me to the station I am in life. And the station I am in life is not my position as CEO. Yeah. No, I think I'm bigger than that. It's the things I do for my family, for my community where I live, yeah? yeah? The, the name, the good name, and the values that I, 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 I stand for, mm. and I teach my children and the children that I mold and I mentor mm. that a good name is better than wealth. I think I, I hold a very important position What do in you this think your, your kids would call you when they say, if you're not there, what would they say? Uh, I think they, 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 they call me friend. I yeah. think I'm, I'm their friend. They know I'm strict. They know that uh, I will not tolerate what should not be tolerated. Yes. But they also reckon with the fact that I'm consistent with my values. I don't say one thing tomorrow. 
and do something different. Yes. I don't preach water and drink, drink wine. wine. So I think they, they respect me for the consistency of values, that what I teach them is what I stand for. You, you, you said that um, the Kenyan music industry, yes, there are very good artists there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet there's also a couple, a, a generation of artists who are not in that space. In Tanzania, yes. we have mm -hmm. Basata, for example, yes, which controls every music which comes through, that it meets the threshold of morality. Yes, uh, the threshold of uh, the, the language which is there. Yes, and that's why they banned so many songs mm. before. Yeah. how would you? If you look at the Kenyan scene, you had a spat with Eric Omondi because Eric Omondi had his issues. Many other musicians sing their own things. Mm. How do you bring them together on a table and we have a proper discourse? I, I think let me clarify first of all that I'm not a regulator now. Mm. What I was doing at KFCB was a regulation. Yes. And regulation is like a traffic police. You stop the cars on the road yes, and just check. to manage the free flow yes. of traffic. Yes. You are not an enemy of the motorists. Yes. Of course, some, there are some policemen who could destroy, who could be, give a bad name to yes. the traffic police. Yes. But I think, in essence, the work of a traffic police is to ensure that all of us can use the road properly, legally, and we don't block each other. Because left to our own devices, yes. as human beings, we'll end up creating chaos on the road. And you've seen it. Yes. So the work of the traffic police is to ensure there is smooth flow. Mm. And that's what I, you do also in regulation. The work of a regulator is not to be popular, it's to, be, to do what is right, mm -hmm. prescribed to the law. Yes. And that's why every time we differed with some of those filmmakers or the creators of content, mm -hmm. we went to court. Yeah. And we won all those cases against Kenya breweries, against uh, uh, LGBT, uh, 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 film Rafiki, yes. and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, because we believe where we end a difference of interpretation of the law, mm -hmm. Uh, then the court was the right place for us to go. Mm. Uh, and so there was nothing personal, really. Mm. Right now, I'm in MCSK to promote music, yes. to promote, uh, to build these guys, yes. to collect and distribute royalties for them, to be their defender, their champion. Mm. So the mandates are different right now. Completely. In fact, right now, if you touch a musician, I'm the one to defend them. <laughs> That's why when NCIC yeah. meant, uh, alluded to the fact that Ato Pangwingwi yeah. uh, was, was, was hate speech. Yeah. And to correct that the song, Si Pangwingwi, yeah. is not outlawed yes. and it is not illegal and it's not hate speech. Yes. And I said, if you touch that one, we'll go to court on his behalf. Yes. Now I'm defending them. My work is to make them rich. Yes. My work is to fight, for, uh, to fight piracy, uh, ensure that there's, uh, there, 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 there's no copyright infringement that musicians are able to rip from uh, uh, the sweat of their brow and they are able to live rich like the other countries. Mm -hmm. But like you've said, the conversation around content mm -hmm. and the themes that they create in uh, terms of music mm -hmm. must also be aligned to our culture, just like we were doing in film. Mm -hmm. But here from now, a commercial uh, and a market mm -hmm. uh, perspective, mm -hmm. where we say, what actually sells? Yes. If you are even selling ordinary commodities in the market. Mm. What are the commodities that sell? And I can tell you, mm. if you take, I hope uh, this would not come out as uh, uh, inappropriate for watershed, mm. but if you are selling sex toys in a marketplace, mm. you not get much market, mm. uh, you never get much buyers, mm. like if you are selling items that are consumed by family. Yes. You know? Yes. So if you are selling food items uh, that, uh, that, uh, that are appropriate for the entire family, you're likely to get more buyers than if you're selling something that is restricted to a small market or for adults mm. and the children have no business with it. Mm. So I would encourage from a commercial perspective, business sense, mm. uh, that we create music that is consumed by the family, that you can play in your car, you can play in the office, and you can play in a, ma in a public place, you can play in a matatu, because that, that way you widen the... Uh, the horizon of your market mm. is restricting it to adults, uh, to use the example that I've used. So right now, I'm not talking from a regulatory uh, dynamic. I'm talking from a marketing point of view, because I want musicians to make money out of their music, and they cannot make money out of their music if they're singing music that is vulgar and restricted to nightclubs. 
<laughs> it will be, the music that we consume will yes. be music that is suitable for the family. It will sell more. Obviously, Charles, there is a space for romance yes. and the sexualized yes. content and so on. Yes, there is. But the moment we make it like the theme, the yes. dominant theme, yes. on TV, on radio, in our public transport and so on, we are also destroying our values and the work of musicians is not to destroy values. It's actually to build them. It's to promote our culture. It's to promote the values of our, of, of our African values mm -hmm. and ensure that we are able to think ahead. And that's why musicians, and I hope I'll be, I'll be able to inject these values, can be able to do research about issues that affect society and think about them in a way that it will prick our conscience and make us think, why should we hate each other? And think about love and cohesion. Uh, about hard work, the values, so, positive social values, mm. resilience, teamwork, family, you know, those kind of things, yes. and bring them in a way that uh, we feel better when we are working together, supporting one another. We bring Ubuntu, you know, like in South Africa, mm. where we say, you are, we, I am because we are, and therefore there's a sense in which I belong to the community. I am not alone. This selfishness, including, and I'm not, I'm not attacking the, the <laughs> Sipangwingui, yes. it, 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 there's, a, there's a sense in which it speaks about the time bomb we are sitting on, yes. where everybody is for himself and God for, for us all. Yes. So leave me alone, mind your own business, Sipangwingui. Yes. That, 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 that catcher speaks about a problem. Yes. I'm not attacking the song, I'm attacking, the, I'm the, the, saying the, the situation yes. that we are in right now mm -hmm. that encourages or makes our children think they have been left to their own devices. We don't care. We are not creating jobs for them. Yes. We have failed them in leadership. Mm. We have failed them as parents. We have failed them at a religious level. We have failed them at national leadership. And they feel they're better off alone. And so they can sing and tell us off, Sipa Mwingwi, Maisha Neyangu, Shugulika Nayako. You see where we have come? Yes. The problem is not that so. Yes, the problem, the is, problem is a situation we are in yes. And what actually that bright musician is telling us, if you don't address this issue right now, yeah. we are going into a situation where no one cares about anyone. It is everybody for himself and God for us all. And you see, that's not the original community uh, structure. Mm. I grew up in a situation, uh, Charles, mm. where I belong to the community. Mm. I respected elders, even if they're not my parents, mm. where we were taught to share, share even them. if we don't have a lot, mm. but we share with the needy. Mm. So when we reach a point where we are now saying, Shugulika Nayako, mm. we are breaking down openly and publicly and with the word on a burden, the structures that make community, that make family. So where do we go? In fact, it should worry everybody in leadership. Mm. When we sing those kind of songs, when we hear those kind of songs, it should worry me, what message are they sending? What is the problem? And we should sit with that young, guy, the young man and actually use him as a representation of many young people who are in that situation, who are failing. Um, you have no moral no, authority, no, authority to Panga. Yes. Who are you? Anything. Yeah, because you have failed us. Yes. And there's a dearth of leadership in so many levels, Charles. Mm -hmm. We have failed our children mm -hmm. as adults. We have failed as leaders. And if you look at it critically, mm -hmm. if we began to admit that there's a problem, mm -hmm. if we began to admit that Sipangwingwi speaks to a bigger issue than just a song or entertainment, and began to formulate structures to revive our culture, to build community social structures, because most of these young people are committing suicide, is because although they have thousands of followers on social media, but they are lonely. These are not true friends. They're not talking to them. The family structures that supported us when we were down. Is no longer when you are alone, somebody is coming to see you. When you are sick, somebody is coming to see you. When they hear Charles has a problem, they, they are come. there for you. Yeah. Now, those things are not there. When you are in problem, in fact, you are trolled on social media. Mm. I, I, I must condemn even what is going on right now. I saw one of our leaders who lost his son yesterday. Oh, who, yes. Yeah. And people are here on social media. What do you think those kids are thinking, or the young people are thinking, when we are celebrating such kind of misfortune? And that's what we have become inhuman. Bile is what dominates our conversations. Hate is violence. It is negativity. 
And this is what I've been fighting. Remove these things. Change them. Bring us happy stories. Let us celebrate one another. Let us empathize where there's, uh, there's need for empathy. And let us build the social structures that will make us progress. Now, this brings me to what I'm doing right now as MC MCSK. Because I believe music is a powerful vehicle for social cultural transformation. And if we can get our musicians to think harder, think outside the box, because sex is not everything. Romance is not everything. There are issues affecting society. And the musicians, just like scholars, mm. must also think about these issues and speak about them so that they prick our conscience to do the right thing by demonizing evil, but glorify positive social attributes. So that if you are a village uh, preacher mm. or a teacher in a primary school in the village, but you are a person of moral values, you are respected, even in that small position that you don't have to, hold, to have a lot of money or to have a, lot, a big position for you to be respected in society. I wish we can use music now to revive those feelings of we belong to each other, those feelings of hard work pace, those feelings of honesty pace, that resilience is important and that we need to work together and live together as human beings. No one was created to be an island. You said about resilience and, and the, big, big, uh, the big structure you are going to do in MC. But remember that people believe that um, honesty is yes. no longer there in many things. Yes. Is it, that, is it the reason why people think that you are Deputy Jesus? Why do you take that thing? How do you think? Well, I find it blasphemous, <laughs> of course. I have never called myself Deputy Jesus. I would never call myself. Yes. I think it, it tends to make it look like it's hypocritical, you're trying to be holier than thou. That is not for me. Yes. I am human. I make my own mistakes. Yes. And in fact, yes. I meant that the, the people look up to me. The Daily Mail They actually. learn from my story. Yes. The Daily Mail wrote about me. The Daily Mail wrote yes. it. Let yes. me quote the Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> the Daily Mail said that yes. Kenyan deputy Jesus uh, have stopped even the wild animals from mating in the bush. I know, I know that story. <laughs> of course, of course, when you stand for something, people try to yes. distract you yes. or create side shows around it. Yes. Uh, I, I never talked about those lions in that context, yes. but it was twisted. However, yes. I am happy that I've been covered by Trevor Noah. Yes. Yeah, yes. I have been uh, covered in the Daily Mail. Yes. I've been on the Independent and the yes. Vanguard. Yes. I have appeared in international media. Not many, that's why I was telling you I'm bigger <laughs> than, uh, it's not just a title. I've done stuff. You've done big I've stuff. I've spoken at Harvard. Yes. I've, spoken, I've spoken in San Francisco yes. at the Google headquarters. Yes. And I've done stuff. I've done stuff. So uh, for me, it is um, that I stood for something. Yes. I stand for something. Mm. And by standing for something and being vocal about it, mm. because I have no other life, I preach what I, I drink what I preach. Mm. I live the life that I tell, I, I talk about. And the people find, they want to twist it to say it's hypocritical. Mm. So they call you deputy Jesus, or they think it's not humanly possible to stand by your values. And that's why I say, those who don't read history, mm. people would go to Ikumene and ask, how was this boy? Mm. Even academically, I set a record in 1983 that has never been broken. You scored how many A's? Uh, how many? But I was the top in the, I can't remember. You know, we're doing the old system. Charles, I don't know whether you, is that your, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing, uh, what was it? But it, there were three subjects. Yeah. But I think I topped in that region. Yeah. But the Kumin Primary School where I, I sat my CPE, yeah. that record has never been broken. Okay? Yeah. Even now, closer, you know, to today, yeah. When I did my master's at the University of Nairobi, yes. we were doing 13 units. Yes. I scored 11 A's and two B's at the School of Journalism, yes. the yes. University of Nairobi, in 2010. I don't think that's a record that has been broken. I, I would want to know anybody else who has scored. I scored 11 yes. A's, A's and two B's. SOJ. Yes, including on uh, these <laughs> things, <laughs> including on copyright and the things that I'm doing today. I know people, people tend to think you can't work hard, you can't be a family man, you can't stay the, 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 the straight and the narrow. And because of our own challenges, and I'm not an angel, I, did never, call, I never called myself Deputy Jesus. I like the moral cop yes. because I think we need more, everybody needs to be a moral cop. Yes. We have a problem yes. and it's good if in the positive sense, yes. all of us can champion for morality. Yes. 
but the deputy Jesus, I take uh, exception. Mm. I, I, it hurts me. I feel bad about it mm. because I think people should not play around with matters faith. Yes, it should be. You can't do that to a Muslim, by the way. You can't. Yeah, if you try to twist the, um, uh, 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 an Islamic you doctrine or tenet, yeah. you cannot. they will rise against you. They it's only can't. that we have made Christianity so fake yes. that somebody can keep saying, calling another one deputy Jesus, and it looks okay. It's not okay. It's wrong, it's yes. blasphemous, yes. and I hate it myself yes. because it's not right. Yes. And I've never presented myself that way. I'm, my, I'm human. I have my own flaws. And I live my life, by the way, practically. I'm human. I don't hide, yes. by the way. Yes. Do you know, Charles, yes. I live such a simple, open life uh -huh. that for a long time I've been entitled even to a bodyguard. Yes. Do you know I've never had an armed person, and I don't think I will ever need I live a simple life. You've I don't. Not stolen from someone. That's I have right. no. Yeah, you know the you things that steal from the, the you things that make yes, yes. Family. If you steal people's women or <laughs> money, or you do <laughs> deals and you, yeah, yeah, those are the things that make big yeah, people yeah. be killed. Yes. because you took away somebody's wife, yes. or you took away you and a deal. Yes. Yeah, one million. Yeah. yeah, the reason why I walk in the streets and I live a simple life. Mm -hmm. And I've never had an armed bodyguard in my car. Yes. I can say yes. this openly yes. because God protects me. Yes. And I've never felt the need. Yes. It's because I have grown consistently upholding values of honesty. Yes. When I make a mistake, I say, I'm sorry. If you help me, I'll say, thank you. Those basic words of, I'm sorry, thank you, excuse me. Yes. They were ingraded, engraved in me in my childhood, and that's what I teach my children. Mm. So, so, so this deputy Jesus was uh, twisting it to mm. make it look like fake. It's not. Mm. I am a believer. But there's a sense in which those who say so mm. also are prophetic because mm. I am a follower of Jesus. I told you I got born again on the 23rd of June, 1984, yes. when I was in Form 1. Yes. And I've never turned back. I've been a school head boy, I've been a preacher, I've been all this. Yeah. I've never turned back. I've held positions of authority. Mm. I've dined in White House. Mm. I have uh, dined with the kings and presidents. Mm. I've held money. I've been in charge of budgets that are huge, mm. and I've lived my life. Mm. I have many mistakes, but they were human. Where I'd made a mistake, because sinjawai kunywa pombe, sinjawai vuta zigara, sinjawai mimi nemelelewa. I mean, but, but I'm married. <laughs> How do you think I got my wife? Was Chana Sio Bambi? Was Chana Sio Shetani? How do you think I got my wife? No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, they, they say you kiss many. I don't you know what. Kiss, yeah, yeah. So, you, no, 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 now you kiss many girls. <laughs> Before you meet your wife. Because I don't think that is a good saying to say you kiss many frogs. But in the context of that saying. No, you must. Date. You interact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interact. I'm, I live a normal life. Yes. I'm a man. I live a normal life. Yeah. I have friends, both yes. gender, yes. and uh, that I embrace. There are women who would call me yes. when they need, yes. and they know I mean well, and I will not take advantage of them. Okay. I live a real life. And that's why I'm saying I may never be uh, <laughs> Mother Teresa or, or some of those saints of old. Yes. But I think when it is to be written, about someone who tried to be consistent with their values, yes. who tried to be honest and to do the right thing. When is to be written by real history writers, not this uh, gutter mm -hmm. press that we read today, mm -hmm. that would, uh, like now you remember, when I, was, uh, when I was removed from KFCB, the headline in the nation mm -hmm. was, Deputy Jesus could not save himself. Huh? Yeah, you can see, no objectivity, no professionalism. We just pander to you know, all this kind of nonsense. Because yes. that's, not, that's not reporting. Yes. Reporting would have been the CEO of Kenya Film Classification, blah, 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 blah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but when and you put, that, story, when you put that as a headline, yeah. it speaks about the sorry states of our media. Yeah. It, it's a, it is actually a challenge to all of us to yes. up our game. Yeah. Because you, you, I, I'm sure you agree with me. Yes. There is no glory in putting that kind of a headline. There is no professionalism. Mm -hmm. There is no objectivity. Mm -hmm. You are trying to uh, create sideshows and uh, push a very serious issue, like somebody who has been removed from an office illegally. They have a wife and children and relatives, mm -hmm. and there are people who stand for the truth, and they are known to champion values, and that's what you could write about them. It, 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 it speaks about the sorry states of our media and our values as a society.
So, because of time, yes, we can go on and on. But I would, I was, I was, what would you say is the only thing which will describe you as a person, and what defines you as a human being apart from the moral quest for morality? Uh, what are the challenges at the home level which you think probably people need to know that as a human being, I, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua, I also suffer from this, but God has been gracious. Absolutely. I've told you I've lived a good life, yeah. a real life, practical. Mm. And, and uh, fortunately, I am very vocal on social media. Mm. I have parents who are centenarians, yeah. and I take care of them. I've taken care. I take my parents to be mine alone even though we are many in the family, but for the last 30 years or so, mm. I've taken care of my father and my mother. Mm. And, and it comes with a lot of challenges, mm. because when they are old, mm. also their judgment is sometimes not very yeah. correct. Yeah. So you might find you are fighting uh, something wrong, mm. or, or one of them who is hurting them, mm. and they, 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 they are more in, inclined to supporting that, mm. and so on. And you face that, and a lot of people detach, mm. and they say, I'm the one who is helping you guys, but you don't even seem to appreciate, you seem to be supporting people yeah. who are not, yes, yes, yes. But I've never detached. Every time I face, because I've seen my parents progress mm. from their 80s to 90s and so on, mm. and uh, they, they, you see the phenomenal changes uh, that come with the old age, mm. and now you have to start now understanding them. Mm. And that challenge, the call to understand and embrace them, mm. in those, it is not easy. It's not easy, it, is, it comes with a lot of challenges and a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a family person, mm -hmm. as a husband, as a, as a father, mm -hmm. uh, when you are living your life so publicly mm -hmm. and you still have a family, mm -hmm. and you have your own flaws and failures. Mm -hmm. I'm not an angel, so, and you're living with people who are not illiterate and who are not Indians, they, they know, yes. and they are very honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge of being honest even with your weaknesses the challenges of being practical and real mm. uh, in your low moments, and the challenges of having a strategy to rise when you are hit and everybody's watching, including mm. your own family and the people who love you. Uh, when it's being discussed out there, <laughs> yes. it is different because those are not people who don't know you, yes. but the ones who know you are watching you. And sometimes it can affect them. I've mm. seen my children sometimes affected mm. by the kind of neg negative media. Mm. And that is, that is what brings me low. That's, when makes me, that's what makes me feel there is no job worthy uh, sacrificing my family. Mm. The jobs that I've left, mm. I left when my family came in. Yes, mm. when my family came in, mm. it's like it's not worth it. Mm. Yeah, and to make a decision. So, so, so that pains me when you have to also sacrifice for them, mm. and yet you need the job to sustain to the family. Sustain uh, yeah, 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 that, that conflict of there's what you want to push in the public. Yes. There's a cause that you feel even your family does not understand. Yes. Like I'm very strict with these issues of content. Yes. Uh, my wife is very liberal, uh, you know. Yes. She went to Kenya High School. Yes. I came from the other, the yeah, other and the, 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 yeah. And I, I actually I believe she has the pedigree, mm. even in terms of uh, education. Mm. She's a career educationist. Yes. And, but yet still I believe the bigger picture and being the husband and being uh, as someone who is pushing a, a national cause. Mm. Uh, that, those conflicts come in. Yes. And you got to sit and talk with your wife, with your children. Mm. Sometimes you differ fundamentally on issues, but still you have to embrace one another because, I mean, that's what life is. There, you can never agree on everything. If two never. people agreed on everything, one of them is unnecessary. And one and is I, lying. One is lying one and is, is lying. unnecessary. Yes. So, 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 but it's not, the, those moments are not easy mm when you are being discussed in public and in private. It is easier to live your life privately without having to drag the public or your, 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 your activities outside to your home. But I live a life that is all around. There is no public me and private me. I am, what I am in private uh, is what I am in public. And it's not easy to balance the disconnect and dichotomies that exist in perception as a father, as a husband, as a, as a son, and as a relative, you know, I have brothers and sisters, yes. and then uh, this person that is painted on TV and on national newspapers. That dichotomy is what makes me 
pray a lot, seek the face of God, and all the time have mentors and people who are higher than me, spiritual leaders who pray for me and who mentor me. And that's how I've survived the many challenges I've faced in life to be where I am today. And you have very many challenges. At KUJ, you had a challenge with the Bonfas Mwangi. He accused you. Maybe you can set that record straight. Yeah. Then at, uh, you manage to the lowest point when you're being hounded out of the office. You've come out stronger. And now your highest point. Changing. Every time I have had to stand for something. Yes. Uh, and my values were tested against my job, yes. I, I had an issue. By the way, I worked for Nation for nine years, yes. but I was sacked summarily Why? after nine years. I differed with management. I was, I was elected Secretary General of KUJ, mm -hmm. and uh, my maiden speech, I took on the president, former President Moy, he and attacked Kenyan journalists, and I responded. Mm -hmm. And uh, Moy was a very good president. He called me to State House. And instead of, you know, bashing me, we are there walking in the lawns of State House, and then he said very good things. I remember Lee Jiro calling me and telling me, Uko na karibu na TV, ebuo na sasaba, bile mzee hamefraya njue maneno ili umesema. Because I was telling the president, we need to regulate the media. That time there was no regulation. Now I've been appointed uh, Secretary General, okay, and I'm here telling our president who was perceived to be a dictator that we need to regulate the media. It didn't go well with the media. Yeah. So I was headline, yeah. and the management decided that I was not good to be in employment. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I'm in KUJ, and that space is different, so I'm seeing the president as Secretary General of KUJ. You're not but I'm going back to the newsroom, newsroom as, as, a, as a reporter yes. and as an editor, yes. we, an employee yes. of the nation. So that conflict came, and at some point, I had to stand my ground and tell them, if you have to take away your, the job, job, take it away. Yes. And when I got the letter, I never turned back. Yes. At some point, I was called to denounce a letter and written to the management, mm -hmm. actually to His Highness, mm -hmm. uh, the Aga Khan. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I, I stood, I believed journalists should be trained and paid well. Yes. But there were things that were happening that I believed were not good for me, and as the Secretary General, I had to write about them. Mm -hmm. So I wrote to management. And I was called at some point and told, withdraw that letter and come back to work. In fact, the guy who was telling me that, who was my MD, was uh, Ivan Skidero. <laughs> so Skidero called me to his office and told me, withdraw, just withdraw and go back to your desk. Yeah. And I told him, no, thank you. I meant every word in that letter, and I'm not really, And uh, that was it. By the time I got to the reception, they disabled my card, and that was it. So summary dismissal. Then I get to KUJ. Yes. Forget about what Bonifa said. Some of those things that cannot be substantiated. Yes. You know, if you say something, if you say Charles is a thief, you yes. should substantiate. You have to. Yeah. yeah. Because what we did, we had an event. Yes. I had revamped KUJ to a point mm. where we were giving awards that have never been matched mm. to date. Yes. We used to give 300,000 and a lot of other and, uh, laptops then. Laptop was a big thing yes. in 2004. 3, 2005. Yes. Uh, and then, I, like I, you had me telling your colleagues, I was working very closely with embassies, with the World Bank, yes. with the big organizations. Mm. And I was trusted. Yes. I was invited to White House alone, not, as, uh, not through government. <laughs> okay? I was trusted. I had influence. Yes. And the government did not see me, uh, did not, it did not go well. Mm. That influence, that I would call, be called by ambassadors in Upper Hill, and I'm addressing a caucus of ambassadors. So a lot of stories were created to bring me down. Yeah. And I remember during that event, Samsung and given some TV stations as a, to be given as awards. Yes. I, as a CEO, I just picked them and we took a photo for them, yes. not for me. Yes. They're the ones who wanted to give. Yes. So you take a photo, but you give the TV back where it is kept, you don't even know. Yes. During the award, this is a presidential event at Intercontinental. Yes. You can't bring TV sets. <laughs> you can't. You give a voucher and people go and pick. Collect, yes. But these guys twisted the story and said we had stolen the TVs. So when I heard that, I asked where are the TVs. I was there in the store. Yes. So I told Samsung, now that it has gone public and it's in the media, please let us return them. They used to be somewhere near Jivaji, yes. uh, Koinanga Street. Yes. There's a, there used to be a Samsung there, if you remember. Yeah, I remember. It. Yeah? yeah? So I told them we are bringing them there and because guys are vouchers, they will come and pick them there. Yeah. And we did a press conference. In fact, they arranged the place so well. Mm. 
We did this in the morning. We took a panga kila kitu ni kuambia sosa nane. We do call the media and we do the press conference and we count the TVs. Yes. When I went at two, the management of Samsung was not there. So we wow. wait around three after one hour. I announced, I said, these are the TVs. Yeah. Everybody was saying they are stolen. You can see them. Yeah. The media checked. When I left, yeah. I'm told us another statement was issued to say they were not the ones that we and the, the serial numbers were different and so on. Oh so God. when Boniface keeps saying that we stole his TV, yeah. one, it was not his. <laughs> there were TVs given by <laughs> Samsung to be exactly. given. It was not his. Yes. Number two, yes. this was a presidential event at night. Yes. You can't bring, security will not allow you to come with sets. Yes. You take a voucher. The EV and a voucher, yeah. he could have gone and claim it because I gave back the TVs publicly, not yes. because we installed it. Yes. They were removed from the store and to respond to a story that was in uh, the media yes. that they were stolen. So there was nothing like stealing. But he kept bundling that story. Uh, all over. That's why we need yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. that the history maker, we say things straight, we've said, and I think... You know, there were black and white TVs, and I remember that time <laughs> I said, even my watchman yes. was not watching those kind of things. I issued that statement, it was quoted, by the way. But because there was a campaign, the media owners, I yes. remember that time, so media owners issued a statement, airport. yes, by government. Yeah. And I can tell you, the yeah. people Behind who are it. doing that, I mean, yeah. there were senior people. Uh, yes. And they used to send me notes and, uh, I mean, messages and uh, tell me, Kwisha Wewe, Kesho Ndiyo Mwisho Wako. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these are things that are called. But, but, but look, we were, they destroyed a very good award. Now, when they, they killed the KUG awards, yes. Me, I moved on with life, yes. and we started because I was serving at the media council. That time we had started the media council. We moved the awards to the media council, yes. and nobody has ever accused. This is the same model. Yes. I am the one who structured it. Yes. I'm the one who was chairing the committee, and to date, those awards take place. And no one accused. Nobody now says, yeah, I, think, I don't think they give as much money or as much, uh, you know, uh, awards as we used to do, but they still exist. And I served in the media council for seven years and were giving those awards and nobody ever accused us. So it was just a story to malign me, like I've said. But those things don't stick on me. They don't stick. No, they don't stick. They don't so stick. this other one, look, uh, they, 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 I, I, I believe God has been gracious to me. Honestly. You've done wonders. If, if you can be removed from the office by with police a with a gun, yes. and then years later, you are, I mean, a year later, you are still... Smiling and uh, yes, smiling thing. around. It takes God. And that's how I have come to where I am. Not because I don't make mistakes, by the way. Yes. I don't want anybody watching me yes. to imagine that I'm parading a moral uh, paradigm that makes me uh, holier than thou. Yes. I live a normal human life. In fact, my mistakes are so public <laughs> <laughs> because I don't live a fake life. Where do you buy your suits? Ah, uh, well, I am. You know, all along, a good people. Been sharp dresser, sharp. I, 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 I always associate with people uh, who take care of, uh, of me, yeah. my wardrobe, yeah. uh, you know, uh, my, my demeanor, my presentations, my, uh, the things I've done in life, including my education, by the way. Yes. And, and let me tell you, Charles, it takes people. If you are in public life and you want to live and achieve yes. uh, greatness. Yes. You need people. I am being blessed to have people around me, yes. great and small. Yes. I can tell you, President Moy loved me for nothing. I don't know why, but until the last day in his office, yes. we remained friends until his death. And he just picked me. I gave a speech in State House and I became his friend. And I would get a call and the president wants to talk to you. I would go to State House and spend time with him. So I, 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 I learned to be smart, one, because of responsibilities. I mean, if you're going to see the president, you, must, you don't yes. just appear there, you know, wearing slippers. Yes, you so, so, like I've told you, I'm consistent. And I, I, it, the, the dress code is part of my values. It's part of my being sensitive to what I do, who I am, and what I stand for. If you're not a journalist, if you're not a moral cop, if you're not whoever you are, what would you have been? I wanted to be a judge. I stand for, if there's something that pricks me, is injustice. I hate injustice. It, it just gets me mad. If you have ever seen me in my weakest point is when someone was being mistreated or treated unfairly. 
So I wanted to be a judge. And my father, fortunately, that was his dream for me. Mm. And uh, right now, I am uh, intending to pursue law. Mm. Probably I will end up there. Uh, I think <laughs> I've given myself a target. Once I do my PhD, yes, the next the undertaking day. is law. And now where I am now, and having done copyright law mm. in my master's, I think now doing law proper and representing people. So I like fighting for people. And uh, being a judge for me was the ultimate because you give a ruling that is binding and it can make or break somebody's life. But you do it by applying justice, by applying your conscience into it, and by doing what is right. And I think judges, uh, I think by nature, they stand in deity, in the line of uh, divine divinity. And that's what I wanted to be, a judge, to dispense justice. So what would you say if someone was to describe you? Mm -hmm. And of course, we've knocked out Deputy Jesus mm -hmm. because of blasphemy. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's fair, not fair on me, yeah. If we, we, you are a moral cop. But yes. who, what would you describe yourself as? I would describe myself as the real human being a real man, not a saint, <laughs> unless like Nelson Mandela once said, yes. unless you want to describe a saint as a sinner yes. who keeps trying, okay? Yes. I, I am the real human being. The reason I stand so firmly on values mm -hmm. is because I believe it's doable, not because you don't fail, you don't make mistakes, uh, not because you don't have weaknesses, but because if you set your mind to do what is right, and keep filling your mind with positivity, with positive vibes, and meeting with the people. Look at how amazing it is, Charles. I, we spoke yesterday. Look at the relationship between yesterday and now and where it is. Yes. This is how human beings should relate. Yes. I, don't, I don't need to know which part you belong to or where you <laughs> came from. Charles, you are the, a decent human being, and that's what I consider myself to be. A decent human being. Not a saint, unless you want to describe a saint as a sinner who keeps trying. <laughs> a Manchester United fan? Yes. I'm a my United fan. Oh, Last there we go. Question. Let's yes. go football. Yes. Favorite team in Kenya? Uh, of course, Kongalo. I, I support, <laughs> yeah, I support Go, Gormaya, the Green <laughs> Army. Yes, they have been consistent also. I like teams that are consistent. Why yeah. are we not performing in Old Trafford? We will. We'll get back. We lost it when Ferguson left. I think, uh, and this is why it's good to build the fundamental values. Yeah, the basics. Yeah. You see, yeah. if you come with a philosophy, but it's only you who has it, yeah. it may not stand. I think Ferguson, with all the accolades he has, yes. he failed us by not building the infrastructure that would sustain a team at the top. And that's why when he left, it went with him. Exactly. It will take years to rebuild, probably decades, yeah. for Manchester United to become the Manchester United of early 90s yes. and 80s. Which book are you reading currently? Right now? Mm. I, what, what am I reading? I'm reading some funny books. That <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm in my, uh, is it my 13th yes. of the Bible, yes. by the way? I'm doing, the, I'm doing my 13th. I'm on a cycle yes. of my 18th journey yes. uh, of the Bible. Yes. I, 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 I asked God to give me time yes. that I would be able to read the Bible every year. Yes. And that way, I would reach 50, uh, 50. I would have read it 50 times, yes. back yes. to back. But right now, I'm reading the Bible. I, l l let me say that. Yeah. But there's a book called uh, Effective Leadership mm. that is shaping my values. It speaks about uh, some of the challenges that I've gone through, but what makes a leader. There's another book that is, I'm reading also, because I read many things at the same time, that is written by the king of Dubai, mm. the uh, Arab Emirate. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it's on... Blood and oil? No, how, is it how I did it? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and why am I missing the title? And it's, a, it's one of the current, mm. in the current list. But the whole, the, the whole thing is, mm. I'm now concentrating on leadership. I used to be very academic in approach when I was pursuing my master's and PhD. Mm. Right now, I'm interested with the real change mm. from where I am. I'm not waiting to become a governor to make change. 
when I'm not waiting to become the president. I was to be in the race this time round. I know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I just looked at the convoluted. It's quite convoluted right now. Yeah. But uh, I believe in 2027. You will be in the ballot box. I will be in the ballot box. For presidency governor? God knows. I think I'll give it a shot. Uh -huh. But the least that could, it could be is the governor of Machakos County. Sunday best. What was your Sunday best attire? Ah, sunny best. <laughs> you know, you know, like I've told you, my my children have challenged. Them they don't have Sunday best nowadays. Yeah, you? but they have challenged me yes. because you know before we used to wear suit and tie and go to church. Yes. And uh, I lived that life for a long time. Yeah. Right now we have moved to churches where even the pastor is yes. preaching like you. Yes. So when we moved to Nairobi Chapel about ten years ago, yes. and we found uh, Bishop Oscar Murio, yes. then Pastor Oscar Murio. Yes. Just simple, uh, then Nick Coril took over, and sometimes they can just come wearing a t-shirt like you. Yes. And they, you know, so, so we, we, they started challenging me to, you know, dress down, Dad, it's not that serious. <laughs> you're, on a, you're in a suit. Sunday, so there yeah. are times when I'm very, like, like, like the way I wanted to come, uh, is, is only that I realized the consumers of this uh, might, be, might be an audience that requires to see me this way. Yes. But otherwise, I was very relaxed. I was in uh, some... <laughs> uh, some 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 uh, funny rubber shoes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and I was like you. I don't know why I removed my T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. No, this one. Is, yeah. So, so yeah. my Sunday best is the environment. Is who I am. When I'm with my kids, I I can't imagine now wearing a suit and going out with my kids. We wear shorts. Yes. Yeah. If we are going to church, I would dress casually. Yes. Um, but also, again, if I'm going to church and I'm likely to find the president there. Yes. I would dress differently because people know me yeah. and they will pick me from the back yes. and take me to the front. Which music are you listening to? Hey, I have two that are now in my mind. Yes. I, I have found myself singing Solomon Kubwa's Munguetu Mwenyengu a lot. Mm. And then I'm singing Nimeona Mkono Wabwana, which is really a testimony for me. Yeah. I'm singing it as a testimony. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and of course, now I'm in the industry that supports all genres of music. Mm -hmm. So uh, Supangwingwi uh, is sort of, I'm thinking about it. Yes. I'm thinking a lot about it and finding myself yes. harming it yes. because I'm, I'm looking at the challenge that drove this musician yeah. to express himself that way because mm -hmm. I think there's, there's a message he's passing. Yeah. So if you wondered on this side of uh, the secular, mm -hmm. Supangwingwi, but then Mkono Wabwana and Solomon Kubwas Mungueto Mwenyengubu. I hope the final question now. If this, hope, this year we hope that uh, MCSK won't give the musician 2,500 going forward. <laughs> you know, it's a very complicated situation, uh, Charles, because yes, yes. if I had 10, 000, 10 million Kenya shillings mm. to distribute to 15,000 members, Ooh. chances are that they'll get about 500 shillings, yes. not even 2,000. Yeah. On average, yeah. the priest can come, can distribute even five million, and it may, it may look okay, but our members are more. Yes. However, yes. I want to change the model. Yes. I think it is an insult to pay somebody 1,000, yes. because even when it comes to your MPESA, what do you say it is for? Is it a token? Is it royalty? Yes. I want to shake the tree and let the fruits fall, yes. let the mangoes and oranges fall. Oh, yeah. There's so much money by Kenyan musicians being held by the matatu industry yes. who have not been paying for a long time yeah. because there's no police for enforcement. Mm. I want to get conversation that will get the police to unlock that money. Mm. There's so much money in Skiza Tunes. Yeah. The president signed the bill the other day, the other day raised yeah. the percentage from 16 to 52. Yes. The money owed to the musician, yeah. to the artist. Yes. If we can get these people pay yeah. and we get the tech companies that are holding our money, Tele telecommunication uh, companies pay international bilaterals that we have signed if we can unlock those monies and get them i am seeing a situation where sooner or later mm. i'll be able to distribute one billion okay yeah. that will make sense yeah. because a musician gets a million another one gets 10 million another one gets two million yeah. you know that that will make sense yeah. but this idea of sending one thousand shillings is an insult not only to the one receiving but also to me as a CEO. So I've decided, rather than just distribute in general terms, one, sanitize the list. 
to ensure that the people we pay are the people who should be paid. Yeah. To do that, there must be some, oil of, uh, some, some forensic audit, audit of sorts yes. that, that really cleans the list so that you are clear about who you are paying. Mm. Because some of the, there is allegation and there is contestation right now that some of the members are ghosts. How true that is, I can only know when I examine the list. Yeah. So paying is not something I'm rushing to do. I have some little money, but there are challenges also facing MCSK. And if musicians can take MCSK as their company, private company, yes. they need to be disciplined and behave well as well and give us time to sort out this. I'm a new CEO. Mm. Just come into the company. I need to s sort out the infrastructural, the, the, the management issues, the integrity issues, and ensure that we start on a clean slate. It will take time. Mm. But more importantly, the saving grace is that there's so much money being held that today I could unlock one channel of royalties and pay one billion. And I think if we take MCSK as a company, that it is a private company limited by guarantee, mm -hmm. and that members are the shareholders, and that if we pay, it's like paying dividends, mm -hmm. you don't pay to collapse the company. I have workers to pay. Yes. I have bills to pay. Mm -hmm. You know, they say if you collect one billion, you pay... Uh, if you collect uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 million, you pay 70% and you only use 10% for administration. Mm. The other day we collected about 16 million, mm. okay? Mm. And a court order that was amounting, court orders amounting to about 22 million. Mm. So you have 16, but you have a court order. So what do you do? Do you distribute or do you pay obey the, the court obey, order? You, obey the court you order. sort out, because even companies, there are times when they announce we are not giving dividends, because yes. this is where we are. But ultimately, if you want to run the MCSK as a company, mm -hmm. I think members will have to give back the faith to their leadership and agree we can trust you. Give us time, a time frame, on how long you need to sort out these issues and when do you intend to pay, and then we work together towards that goal. My aim right now is to unlock the money that is closed out there, that it runs into billions, mm -hmm then we pay something respectful, something that is honorable, something that makes sense. If you pay Ruben Kigame, for example, 1,000, or Calligraph Jones, mm. 1,000, <laughs> or 78 shillings, like I saw somewhere, 78 yeah. shillings, yeah. it's a joke. And so if musicians put pressure on us to pay that, they are the owners of the company, but it's wrong. The best way is to sort out this thing, lay the structures, and ensure that we unlock the money lying out there and pay them something that makes sense. And let me tell you, Charles, there is so much potential in this industry. So much money. As I said, my joy will be the day I will see a Kenyan musician, a billionaire. And why not? If you Google the top 20 musicians in the U.S., they're billionaires. The oh, Maria Carries of this world, they are 400 uh, million U.S. dollars, 800 U.S. Rihanna is 1.7 D, uh, 1.7 USD uh, billion. Billion, yes. Billion US dollar. Mm. Rihanna. Yes. At, uh, in her early 30s. Yes. Kenyan musicians are so creative, so talented, but we have lacked leadership. Leadership takes time. Change takes time. And they have to be patient with me and with the, 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 the management and the team yeah. for us to sort out the issues affecting the industry. Once we do so, and we unlock this legally, because you have to do it also procedurally. Write to people, I'm writing letters now, to the concerned parties, the association of pubs and so on, and bars and restaurants. I'm writing to the Matatu industry. I'm writing to Safaricom. I'm writing to all these uh, consumers yes. that use our music, that use copyright, to pay. And I also have to give them time, and we enter into arrangements, negotiations. I'm writing to international organizations that owe us money, Capasso in South Africa. We are sorting out issues of identification of the logos because we are given, you know, bulk logos to identify, which is the Kenyan music. Mm -hmm. And we're not able to do it because management is not functioning properly. Mm -hmm. Once we identify, Capasso will release the money. Uh, Safaricom will release the money. And that is when we can pay something that will make sense to our musicians. It takes time. I'm only one month. And I'm hoping that with their cooperation and support, will change the industry. There's so much potential. I will, we wish you very well in your new endeavor. Thank Thank you. Gary.
Thank we you. hope that you will change the industry. Thank you. And we continue chatting and talking. Yes. And you are a real history maker. Thank you, Charles. Parting shot? What is your parting shot? Parting shot is what I said. Nations rise or fall on the basis of their moral okay. values. Let us know that we need each other to function as human beings. Let us know that our kids are watching. Let us do what is right. Even as musicians, let's sing songs that promote values. Let us encourage national cohesion. The culture of hate, bring him down, pull him down, does not build a nation. Nations rise when they pull together. The Harambe motto, the Singaporean mo motto, Thank that you. where people came together on the basis of m m moral values and build a nation that we were, was this, at par with us at independence, but now is a first world country. We can do it as Kenya. But we must go back to the basics sort out the software. There you've heard it from Dr. himself. He talked about the rational path. If you've read that book by the three professors, of course, uh, the University of Nairobi, he touched deeply into things morality and I think uh, real history maker. Keep watching. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. This was good. <laughs>